What is happening? My name is Michael and today I'm going to show you how to make this concrete counter slash bar top out of the rabbit set concrete mix as opposed to the mortar mix that I usually end up using. Also, we're going to have some fun with this rubber slash silicone edge molding. All this and more, so let's make something cool. I'm going to answer a burning question that I get in the comments all the time, and that is, why can't I use the Rapid Set Concrete Mix over the Rapid Set Mortar Mix that you typically use for your concrete countertops? And the answer is simple. You can use the Concrete Mix. I just find that it's a little easier to work with with the mortar mix for the look I typically go for in my concrete countertops. The other big reason why I don't typically use the concrete mix for concrete countertops is you've got to be a minimum of two inches thick with a concrete countertop with this stuff as opposed to the inch and a half that I can go with the mortar mix. <laughs> but today, not only are we going to make a concrete countertop with the concrete mix, but we're also going to use this silicone edge molding that will give us a really cool live edge. Now. You've seen me do a live edge before with a mason hammer, but for those of you that are unsure or not confident enough to use a mason hammer, this is so easy and so fun to use and will give you perfect results every time. Oh, by the way, if you haven't had a chance to check out Matt Weaver and Weaver Barnes at weaverbarns.com, go ahead and do that. I'm loving my new shed so far. Haven't got anything dialed in yet, but uh, check and see what I have going on so far. Here's my nice six foot door that uh, one half of it is cluttered with already, but got the router station, got this very, very temporary table set up with all my tabletop stuff, bunch of junk stored underneath it, uh, toolbox, unfinished drywall that will become all of my long lumber storage, the uh, new backdrop location that uh, totally not set up yet, but it's getting there. This is my feeble attempt to get the echo out of the audio for you guys. Some uh, small lumber storage with uh, my clamps and all that other good stuff, my chop saw, <laughs> but definitely a work in progress. Uh, main thing is, is we're all wired up. We've got lights, got receptacles wired around the entire shed. So slowly but surely we're getting there. But uh, enough about that, let's move on to the project. We're gonna start our project off by making our mold. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because this is just a simple melamine box, but a couple of things I do wanna make note of is that the base is two foot by three foot. The sides are two and three quarters inch to create a two inch reveal to accommodate our silicone edge mold. Also, I like to do what I call a star pattern where I butt one end of each side to the following side. That way, I don't have to worry about exactly how long each side is. All right, now we have our form complete. Typically, the next step would be to seal all the corners with uh, silicone, but not today. Not today. Today, we're gonna use this really cool silicone edge form, and sealing the corners is just simply not gonna be necessary. And to make things even more simple, we're going to attach this using mounting tape. Uh, I suppose you could use any kind of double-sided tape you really want to, but I have a lot of luck with this stuff. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. But I'm just gonna simply line the sides with this mounting tape, peel the plastic off, and attach the edge mold. Once you get to a corner, you could do a couple of things. You could cut this to get a nice tight 45 degree angle, or you can do a nice tight radius or a nice wide radius. I'm gonna go with something in between. I think it will look a little bit more natural. So what do you do when you got a bunch of excess edge mold at the end? Well, like I said, you can simply cut this stuff. You can use a utility knife or even a miter saw. But I bought this stuff on Amazon and I'm gonna be honest with you, this stuff ain't cheap and I kinda like to use it again. So a very simple solution would be to remove one of your sides and terminate the end by simply letting it hang out the back. 
As far as this gap is concerned, I'm just simply going to seal it up real quick. No big deal. All right, now all that's left to do is to just spray this down with WD-40 and pour. But before we go any further, I just wanna let you know that this project was inspired by a video I saw, link up above, by a fella named Zach Builds. Michael Builds, Zach Builds. <laughs> no, we're not brothers, but uh, he has insanely cool projects, fantastic channel. I'm gonna leave a link at the end of the video so you can subscribe to his channel. I can't believe that he doesn't have a million subscribers yet, but anyway, subscribe to his channel. He is gonna have no idea who you're talking about, but tell him Michael Builds sent you anyway. Moving on. Let's get this thing poured. All right, you've seen me mix this stuff up a hundred times before, but there are a couple of points I want to make with this particular product. Five quarts of water, by the way. So the Rapid Set concrete mix, the only difference between the concrete mix and the mortar mix is the size of the aggregate inside, the size of the rocks. So the concrete mix has bigger aggregate in it, like like pea-sized gravel type of aggregate. So therefore, that changes the depth that it can go. So the mortar mix can go from a half inch thick all the way up to six inches thick. The concrete mix can go from two inches thick to 24 inches thick. That makes this stuff good for doing like post holes, large voids, concrete slabs, and you can also do concrete countertops with it. Now you can use the plasticizer flow control to get more fluidity and you can use the set control to get yourself some more working time and you can use them in tandem. But a word of caution when using the flow control with the concrete mix, since it does have that bigger aggregate in it, this form is only two inches deep, not too big of a deal. But when you're doing like a post hole or something a lot deeper than two inches, when you add the flow control to it, you're gonna make it more fluid. Therefore, the aggregate's gonna have the tendency to drop to the bottom. In this case, I kind of want it to drop to the bottom because my bottom's gonna become my top, and we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, but just be careful when you use the flow control with the concrete mix. Flow control. That looks good. That's one bag. Let's mix up another bag. Give it a little screed. Don't forget to vibrate the mold. Add some metal reinforcement. Little, little floating action. And if you really want to be fussy, do a little finish troweling. Yes, I know this is not a finish trowel. I can't find my real finishing trowel. All right, we're gonna let that cook for about an hour. We'll flip it over, see what we got. But uh, in the meantime, I wanted to share something else with you. I do want to take you outside real quick to share something really cool with you that the Rapid Set Concrete Mix does that none of the other regular concrete mixes do. The Rapid Set Concrete Mix can actually be poured in cold weather like this without adding any antifreeze or any kind of additive to it to make it cure in cold weather. It's, it's like 19 degrees today. And where that might not be as cold where you are, that's pretty cold for me, so. Although I have no idea why you would want to work with concrete in the cold. <laughs> I love my bucket spray. You have got to get a bucket scraper. If you don't have a bucket scraper, get a bucket. This is a Marshalltown bucket scraper. I'll, I'll leave a link down below. By the way, to uh, set the record straight, this is a mag float. It is not meant for finishing. 
It's a very common misconception that since this looks so cool and it's got this awesome coating on it and then it's a little bit more expensive that it's made for finishing. No, this is just made to take out imperfections, consolidate and get the voids out. hours later. Now, I think it's important to note that I did use warm water to help set this up, but nothing else. No antifreeze or additives or anything like that. Just warm, not hot water, warm water. Good tip if you're in a pinch. Looks done to me, let's flip it over, see what we got. Look at that, came out perfect. And like I said before, and you've seen me do it, you can hammer your own live edge with a mason hammer like this, but this is going to get you perfect results every time where this, uh, you're kind of taking your chances. And you can clean this up and use this as many times as you want. Link down below for where I bought this and have fun with it. As you can see, not much difference appearance wise between the concrete mix and the mortar mix. But another one of those questions I get all the time is can you put the bigger aggregate in mortar mix or say even the cemental? Absolutely. But why bother adding bigger aggregate when the concrete mix already has it in there and it's cheaper? Why would you want bigger aggregate in the mix? In case you want to polish it. And that is how you take a simple material and a simple project like this and take it just one step further. Link down below for where I got these polishing pads and a link up above for the video on how to polish a concrete countertop. But look at this beautiful exposed aggregate. Sure, you can stain this or pre-color the mix before you pour it, but I think it looks fantastic the way it is. This has not been sealed yet, but I plan on saving that for a video that I'm planning on doing pretty soon, so. But uh, I think what I do want to do with this is uh, make a simple base for this and just turn it into a simple bar top for entertaining during the summer. So, what do you think about our new concrete counter slash bar top? Made out of the rapid set concrete mix as opposed to the mortar mix. <sighs> it's, it's missing something though. Wait. Feels much better now. But I can't drink you watching my weight. But I would love to see what you guys come up with playing with the Rapids at Concrete Mix and this cool uh, silicone rubber edge mold. Don't forget to share your projects on Instagram, hashtag Michael Builds Community. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Also, don't forget to check out Matt Weaver at weaverbarns.com. Check out his awesome sheds, like the one he got me. And don't forget to check out Zach on YouTube at Zach Builds. There will be plans and dimensions for this particular projects in the description down below very soon, as well as a list of materials and tools that I used in this particular video. But that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it. And I'll see you in the next video. <sighs> Screw it. <sighs> That's the stuff.